everybody, it's the Mad Master here. I'm just doing a video tribute to William Samus of the band Warlord, who uh, recently passed. I know I'm a couple days late on this one, but I'm just going to go into uh, my whole history of the band um, as far as being a fan and so forth. So I first discovered Warlord by reading about him in Metal Maniacs magazine in the late 90s. Um, I was a regular reader and subscriber to that magazine for a while. I got into a lot of bands, um, probably, you know, you see that. I mean, there's way more than that, of course, and there's books too, and I've CDs and I have records, and, you know. But um, a lot of that was definitely from Metal Maniacs, uh, suggest, you know, reviews, um, suggestions by other musicians that did interviews in there. So, I think I was reading about uh, what the, the album called Best of Warlord, which is uh, pretty much all the early stuff, including like the Cannons of Destruction Have Begun and so forth. And I bought it from this, uh, in 1999, I bought it from this uh, site. I think it was uh, like some kind of CD, maybe it was CD Baby or something like that. It was some weird early mail order internet thing that they sold C uh, mp3s on maybe that's where i heard it i think i ordered it somewhere else or something but um listen to it a lot um if you don't know what warlord or who they are it's a very uh kind of atmospheric early i'd almost call it proto power metal band um hammerfall did a cover of their song child of the damned on their first album Hammerfall's first album, Glory to the Brave. And they had a very, like, very catchy, you know, it might have been a little AOR or like synth influenced sound to them, or even like maybe there's even a slight, dare I say, post punk or new wave, like some of the keyboard parts and stuff, but it's very neoclassical influence too. And there's you know, Scorpions with Lily John Roth. Um, hear that I even hear a little ACDC and come with some of the riffs and like new ever British heavy metal you know Angel Witch and all that stuff you know that was around and it's very early 80s so and they only played one live show in LA before they reformed strangely enough with uh, uh, the singer of Hammerfall in the late 90s early 2000s or early 2000s I believe and I never got to see him but yeah that that best of warlord which is kind of like a their equivalent of Minor Threat's discography album, which is basically, like if a band doesn't release like more than one album, but they release an album and a, a EP and a couple of singles, sometimes they, they, you know, they used to put them on uh, a full length CD. So classic album, I listened to it a bunch, very emotional uh, metal, very atmospheric, a lot of keyboards, you know, the neoclassical edge to it. For the early 80s, not on the Malmsteen level of stuff, but definitely Randy Rhodes slash sort of Uli level of stuff. Very good stuff. So, I uh, guess he died. Uh, didn't say how he died. William Samus was the guitarist and main songwriter of the band. And he died three or four days ago now. But yeah, it was definitely an influence on my own music. And I, I could see his uh, influence on a lot of symphonic metal that we listen to today with some of those songs, you know. Uh, Deliver Us From Evil, one of the best songs, just... There was a... There's some controversy with him, because, like, he was kind of a... I think it was... He studied theology, like, after Warlord, and he kind of became a born-again Christian. A lot of the early... Even the early Warlord lyrics had a little bit of things going in that direction. So I know a lot of metal people probably might question that, but... Even on Deliverance from Evil, it had kind of that, or Penny from a Penny to a uh, Penny to a Poor Man, you know, another song like that. It's it's really good music, though. I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's so it's brilliant and catchy and just emotional and atmospheric, which I always like that kind of dramatic uh, thing in metal or rock or elsewhere. So I really enjoyed his music. Um, what was that one song that they had? Uh, yeah, they have. They had a lot of different kinds of songs. Like if you listen to that Best of Warlord, you know, there's it, no one song sounds the same. It delivers from evil aliens, you know, that song. It's like, or uh, 
just uh, Mrs. Victoria, that's what I was thinking of. It's kind of like proto Merciful Fate. I mean, I think it was around the same time Merciful Fate were coming out, but you know, there's a lot of just darker riffs in that song. It was more about witchcraft, you know, stuff like that. It was just, it was, they did it a lot better than a lot of other bands around at the time. See, a lot of those early Metal Blade bands I liked, but like, because they were on Metal Blade, I believe, or they re released their stuff that was already released, like independently. Um, I like a lot of those early Metal Blade bands, but the American power metal sound, the proto power metal sound, other than like maybe Omen, I'm not really keen on even Metal Church. I like Blessing in Disguise and some of their stuff, but I'm not as like big on them. Or, you know, I like Sabotage, but like I'm not as into that sound as like the European sound. But Warlord definitely like had more of a European power, proto power metal sound than a lot of other metal blade bands. So I, I highly recommend checking them out. Their reunion albums were kind of hit or miss. I sort of liked them, but um, Joaquin Cans or whatever is, how do you pronounce his name, of Hammerfall, I didn't think he was as good as some of the singers on the, because they had like three or four different singers before him, like on these different EPs and stuff. And I didn't like them as much. I didn't like him as much as those earlier singers. I think he's a great vocalist, but it just, the mystique of the early Warlord recordings were kind of lost with like a kind of mainstream power metal singer, like, like just like, it was just, uh, it missed some of that mystique that the early stuff had. So, I mean, they could have probably had someone else that had more of that, even from modern power metal, but uh, that's kind of neither here nor there. I, I sort of listened to some of them, like a lot of modern, modern iterations of earlier bands. I, I'm kind of skeptical because I think part of the thing with a lot of modern power metal albums are, is the production is just way too clean, but like standardized, but like samey and monotone, if that makes any sense. The dynamics, you know, the loudness wars and all that. So it's kind of hard to listen to a lot of these albums. Of course, like uh, on another subject, Beast in Black, you know, one of my favorite bands that came out the last couple of years but they are like the exception to the rule to me like because they're totally like like i'm not a big fan of sabaton but like it's like this samey kind of like standardized like flat power metal thing but some somehow an orchestral stuff included or really cheesy like aor influence but beast in black take it so far it's almost becomes its own thing it's almost like really weird but um and I, I love that those two albums. Hope they could do another album too. But yeah, rest in peace, William Samus. I read some of his uh, religious writings a couple years ago too. Very fascinating stuff. Um, I think he was like he was deeply religious. They had, they had a band called Lordy and Guard with his wife or girlfriend at the time back in the '90s. Those were reviewed somewhat well. I heard a couple of them. Um, I think it was mainly Drum Machine. Uh, recordings were not so great with that, but that kind of of course adds to it's like like I said sometimes older production just sounds has something to it that some of these modern albums just don't have you know so that's okay too I think he really redid some of those songs with the newer uh, Warlord albums but yeah great guitarist you can you know talk talk to probably half the European power metal and even prog metal like legends and they probably cite Warlord as an influence but it was an unexpected death, but um, rest in peace, rest in metal. See ya.